Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Jenny. This is a restore class. So for our class today, we are going to be focusing on intentions. Um, I'll be talking a little more about that, the difference between intentions and resolutions or goals you know, about this time of year. Well, Happy New Year, first of all. Um, and about, you know, this time of year, uh, we hear a lot about resolutions. And resolutions can be good, but um, they can also set us up for failure and set us up for disappointment. So I um, just want to jump in, um, dive a little deeper into some of that. If any of you practiced with me yesterday in Core and Restore, that was our theme for the day, for the practice was intentions. So um, that is what we will be focusing on through our class. And as far as the physical practice, I'm going to do some side opening, some heart opening, just kind of bring some expansion into our bodies. So for a restore practice, it's a very mellow practice as far as pacing goes. We slow things down. We only do a handful of poses. You know, there might be a little bit of movement, a little bit of flow, but nothing, you know, like a power class. There's no vinyasas, there's no warrior poses, nothing like that. And we use props to support ourselves. So you're gonna wanna take a moment to kind of gather props or gather anything else that you have going on, uh, anything that you have to kind of support you. A few things that are nice, blocks, or um, if you don't have yoga blocks, you can use books or um, something kind of the same size, shape. Um, one or two of them can be nice to just bring the ground closer. As you can see, I like to sit on one. Um, that helps me to just create a little more space in the pelvis so that I can sit just a little bit taller, bringing the pelvis up above the knees. It's especially nice if, you, if you're like me and have tight hips, tight low back, and when you sit, you know, when you try to sit on the ground, you feel like you kind of have to like roll out or lean back. You can't quite get that nice tall spine. So that is a nice thing to do. So props, or sorry, so blocks. Um, another nice thing is a bolster, like a big cushion. Uh, if you don't have a bolster, you can grab couch cushions, pillows. You can grab a big thick blanket and roll it up. Um, you can grab other pillows for support. You can also grab different variations of blankets, different sizes. So I've got kind of a smaller one that I often use this to sit on. Again, bring a little lift in the booty, create a little more space in the hips. I've got a thicker one. You can wrap up, you can wrap yourself up in it in Shavasana. You can also lay a blanket on top of your mat just to add a little extra cushing. Since we're not doing any inverted poses, anything where you need traction, um, you don't have to have you know, the, the sticky side of the mat. So take a moment to gather your props and um, they don't need to be you know, official yoga props. Just find what you have in your house. You know, probably grab a couple of these beautiful pillows behind me. You know, maybe grab a couch cushion. Um, and yeah, so take a moment to gather that and meet me back on our mat. So let's start in a reclined position. So we're gonna start lying down. Your choice, how you wanna take this, and your choice, how you want to support yourself. If you want to, one thing that I'm gonna do, which is really nice for the low back, I've got um, some low back issues, is I'm gonna take my two blocks on level two, and then I'm gonna put a blanket over them. So if you practiced last week, this is how we started in kind of a reclined chair pose almost. So that's one option that you can take. You can lie flat on the back. You can you know, support the legs however you'd like, support the body however you'd like. And we're gonna lie down, turning the palms up, so we're starting in our Shavasana. <laughs> and adjust, make any adjustments, you know, notice how this is feeling in the back. If you have any compression in the low back, you could lift the hips, tilt the pelvis down and spread that low mat out across, or excuse me, the low back out across the mat. You could also puff up through the chest, 
bringing a little extra arch through the spine to kind of lift through the low back by activating the mid part of the back if you know if that helps to alleviate some compression there so just take your time to start to settle in you can turn on some soft music in the background if you if nothing comes to mind and you have spotify you can find um, my profile jenny wiggum and i've got some saved playlists there there's some uh, I think there's one called Restore Yoga, there's one called Instrumental Chill, there's a few different ambient kind of playlists, or just find one on your own if you like to practice with music. And as you are lying down, settle in, allow the body to release, to relax. Finding a slight opening in the heart, tilting the chin up towards the sky so that you create an opening through the throat hands alongside the body or you could spread them out into a T or into goal posts. We're just going to start to settle in, start to check in with the body, start to connect to the breath. And as we do that, as I said, we're going to focus our theme tonight on intentions. And intentions are different than resolutions, different than goals, different than achievements. These all have specific outcomes. Where intentions, it's more about bringing awareness. So, you know, it's, it's okay to be working towards a goal, but our intentions kind of break it down a little bit more. Our intentions not only show us, you know, who we are and what we want, but why we want it and how we're going to get it. So a typical resolution that, you know, we hear at the New Year's is, you know, I'm going to lose X amount of pounds. And so you have this goal, you know, you, you make all the big changes in your life. You go out and you buy a gym pass or you, you know, download the Peloton app and or all that, you know, you buy some sort of equipment, you buy into some sort of exercise regimen, you start to cut out, you know, different foods in your life, you start to restrict that. And, you know, you start to feel all this pressure by all these big changes that you're making to your daily life. And, you know, that may go well for a few days, a few weeks, maybe even a month or two, but without creating sustainable change without creating new habits, then those that goal, that resolution, we're not going to make it. And then we're just setting ourselves up for disappointment, for frustration. And there's a lot of societal pressure around resolutions. So I try not to put too much weight into resolutions, especially around the new year, but focus more on the intention. What do you mindfully and on purpose want to bring into your life and what can you do to accomplish those things. So as we continue to lie on the back, checking in with the body, noticing how you're feeling, connecting to the breath, maybe noticing the rise and fall of the belly. Let's just set a simple intention for this class to move with intention. To bring awareness to what we're doing, how we're doing it, and why we're doing it. And the cool thing with intentions is that you can set intentions anytime. Of course, you can set goals anytime. You can, you know, resolutions are typically res reserved for the new year. But with intentions, you know, if you follow the natural cycles of nature, then not only are we given an opportunity at the beginning of the year, but we're given opportunities at the equinoxes, at the solstices. We're given opportunities to set intentions with the new moon, with the full moon. So nature provides us opportunities to 
kind of check back in with ourselves, to check back in with those intentions, to check back in with those goals, and to see if we need to change or evolve any of those things. And really, you can set intentions every day. It's actually a good practice to get into first thing in the morning before you check your phone or before you start into your daily grind to take maybe five minutes to just check in and to set an intention for the day. Maybe it's just for that specific day. Maybe it's something that you're working on throughout the week, throughout the month, or throughout the year. Or maybe it's a lifetime achievement that you are working towards. But intentions, they basically just turn everything we do into something that we do on purpose. So even, even though we're just lying here, someone who's probably scrolling through Instagram or Facebook right now seeing this is like, what is happening? So even though, even though we're just lying here right now, we're here with intention. We're here to be present in the body, in the breath. Notice the mind, notice the thoughts. With the intention, the intention of every yoga class is just to bring us back to ourselves to feel into the energy in the body and how it moves, how it affects us. To give us an opportunity to practice our mindfulness, to practice intentionality. A couple more rounds of breath here. As you continue to connect to your breath, you're welcome to take deeper breaths into the belly, allowing the belly to rise and fall. You're welcome to activate, activate, I suddenly have an accent, activate ujjayi breathing, finding that activation in the muscles in the back of the throat. Adding that little audible quality to our breath. Beautiful work. As you feel ready, nice and slow, we'll just start to bend the knees, drawing the knees in towards the chest, untuck through the tailbone, maybe a little rocking side to side, a little circling through the knees. And then not losing the connection to your breath or to your present moment, just roll onto one side. Gently press yourself up. And then we're going to use the same, if you had something set up here, if you have your bolster or blanket or something, we're going to use this same setup here to create a side body stretch. Now, if you don't have blocks, you can bring in a bolster, you could roll up a blanket. And this actually might be a little tall, so I'm going to take the blocks down to level one. So on the flattest, lowest setting. Put the blanket over it. But again, you could grab a couch cushion, you could grab a stack of pillows, you could roll up a big blanket. And we're going to bring it. We're going to sit on the right side of our hips. And we're going to start to lay ourselves over this little incline that we've built for ourselves. So we want it to hit at the ribs, at the waist, and we want to be able to lower all the way down. Mm. Not filling it with the blocks. But we want to be able to lower all the way down so we can drop the shoulder down and it creates this big side stretch. So as we set the right side down over our little configuration. The blocks felt like they were digging into my ribs, so I'm gonna switch it out to just blanket so it's nice and cushy. Ooh, that's much better. So as I lay my right side over and set the head down, you could extend the right arm to rest the head. You could bring in a pillow or a block to rest the head. But we're getting this 
opening in the side body, this deep side stretch here. Opening the space, staying connected to the breath. If it feels good, again, you could extend that left arm overhead, maybe even grabbing the right or the left wrist with the right hand. So if you are bringing in support for the head, just make sure that there's space for the shoulder so that you've just got the lift in the side body and you're resting the head if that feels best for you. You could drop the head all the way down. That's going to bring some intense stretching through the neck. So if that feels good for you, then stick with that. Opening up, breathing into that side. Getting some space in that side body, getting a nice stretch through the obliques. Connecting to the breath. So a big benefit of setting intentions is that it helps us to work on the inside, to tune into, and like I said, what we, not just what we want, but why we want it. And part of the why is part of who we are. We get the what, the who, the why, and it can help us to deal with the how, to figure out how do I intentionally create what I want to create? How do I intentionally draw into my life what I want to draw in? How do I intentionally move through my life in a way that feels right, that feels true, that feels honest. Intentions turn everything that we do. And sometimes, sometimes we don't pay attention to everything that affects us. We don't often pay attention to how much we're scrolling or what we're seeing as we scroll through, you know, various social media feeds or pay attention to really what we're watching on TV and how that affects us. Every single thing that we consume, every single thing that we expose ourselves to affects us, whether we recognize it consciously or if it's on a subconscious level. So our intentions, when we bring intentionality into our lives, we start to do things more on purpose. And we start to see the things that don't serve our purpose. A few more rounds of breath on this side. Awesome work. Nice and slow as you feel ready. Just start to press your way back up and out. We'll switch this to the other side. So you're welcome from here to just shift onto the sits bones. Maybe pause here to kind of reset between sides, bending the knees, planting the hands. Maybe taking a few rounds of cat-cow, inhaling to draw the chest forward, shoulder blades draw back, gaze lifts. Exhaling to roll the shoulders in, tucking the chin in and rounding out through the spine, rocking back onto the tailbone. Taking a few rounds here if this feels good or any other movements between sides it would feel awesome. And moving with intention. And then when you feel ready, shifting over to the left side. Just so I don't put my back to you, I'm just gonna flip this over. 
coming onto the left side of the hip, draping yourself over. Again, we want it to hit at the waist, the rib area, so that as we drape ourselves over, we can allow the shoulder to drop all the way down to the ground. Maybe you want to extend that left arm out and rest the head on the bicep. Maybe you want to bring in a block or a pillow, something to rest the head. Getting this opening through that right side of the body. And maybe you want to extend that right arm over. So opening up the sides of the heart. When we think of the heart, we often just think of the front of the heart. But the, the heart is three-dimensional. So it's got a front side, back side, right and left side. So we're bringing this opening through the body, through the side body, which also brings an opening, side opening for the heart. One big thing that we want to have when we are setting intentions, when we are working with intentions, is an open heart, an open mind. One reason that we bring intentions or set intentions in yoga practices is because intentions help us focus on the moment. It brings presence. And that's really what yoga is about. All of these mindful practices are physical practice of yoga, the meditation, all of those things. Journaling, moving meditation, all of it is to bring presence, to bring awareness into our day-to-day -day lives so that we can be more awake, more fully present to everything that we do in our lives to make sure that they serve our purpose, that they serve our goals, our aspirations, our achievements, our resolutions. And because of this present moment experience that intentions help to bring. It also gives us an opportunity to continue to reevaluate our goals, our desires. And because we're not just so focused on the destination, but we're enjoying the journey because we're present to it, we can be present to where we need to make shifts in our goals or our resolutions. And with intentions, we have that opportunity to make the shifts, to make those subtle adjustments as we continue to become more aware of who we are, of what we want and why we want it. Our intentions help us to learn from the journey not just focus on the outcome. Some more rounds of breath here. As you feel ready, nice and slow, we'll start to press our way 
up and out of this pose. And again, if it would feel good to shift onto the sit bones, maybe take a few rounds of cat-cow, maybe take some torso circles. If you're feeling a little tight in the hips and the low back, you can bring the hands back behind you and Wash the knees side to side, little windshield wipers here. For anyone in class yesterday, you are very familiar with this movement. Awesome work. When you're ready, we're just gonna drop the knees to one side and we're gonna come to tabletop or hands and knees. I do suggest using a pillow or excuse me, a blanket. That one's a little thick, but using a blanket as a little cushion, pad those knees. Even if you don't have bad knees now, your future knees will thank you. And this is good, you know, definitely if you have knee problems, if you've had, um, you know, knee surgeries. You want to pad the knees, but if you do have knee issues and it doesn't feel good in this position, then come back to seated. So from here, we're going to take cat-cow, but we want to set this up first. So we want to find a solid connection down to the hands, spreading out through the fingers. And notice the wrists. A typical cue here is to bring the shoulders over the wrists. That's a really extreme angle on the wrist, so if that doesn't feel good for you, don't do it. Walk the hands further forward. Walk the hands wider. Find what feels good for you. I've got a little carpal tunnel in my right hand, so when that activates, one thing that I noticed that helps is slightly rotating my hands externally so that instead of my middle finger pointing forward, my index or my pointer finger is pointing towards the top of my mat. And just that little adjustment through my wrists can alleviate some of that pain. So finding that solid connection to the hands, knees are about underneath the hips, about hip distance apart. We're gonna lengthen through the spine and then we're gonna take cat-cow. So inhaling to lower the belly the heart, front of the heart comes down, pelvis tilts up, gaze lifts, heart shines forward. And then on the exhale, draw the belly in, lift through the back of the heart. Let the back of the heart shine out between the shoulder blades as you tuck in through the chin and tuck in through the tail. So we'll take a few rounds here to whatever depth feels right for you. You can link one breath per movement, maybe inhaling as you lower the belly, smiling the spine into our cow pose. And then exhale as you round out, arching through your cat. Now again, if you do have sensitivity in the knees and it doesn't feel good to be kneeling on the knees, come to a seated position, plant the feet, grab onto the knees, take seated cat-cow. You may not have quite as much range of motion, but that's okay. Inhaling to draw the belly back, or excuse me, draw the heart forward, gaze lifts, heart lifts, and then exhale, rounding out. So you're still working through that spinal flexion. You just don't have as an extreme of a tilt in the pelvis which is what gives you a bigger range of motion. And again, like I said at the beginning, if sitting down like this, you know, you have tightness in the hips and low back, sit on your cushion, sit on, you know, raise the booty up to help create more space there. So we're either exploring our seated cat-cow or if it feels good in your body to be in tabletop, and we're exploring our cat-cow here, focusing on the movement through the heart. And we're bringing in some heart openers here. So as you lower the belly down, 
front of the heart shine forward in cow. And then letting the back of the heart shine out as you round out in cat. Taking it nice and slow. And then you're welcome to stay here through this spinal flexion exploration. Or you could start to maybe bring in some torso circles. So bringing in a little bit more of the side body, working the opening up through the side of the heart. So you could start to you know, shift the ribs out towards the right, dropping the belly down, circling through center, shifting the ribs out towards the left. And then as you round out through your cat, circling back up through center, so still working that spinal flexion, but also bringing in a little bit of side bending. This can be done from that seated position. Again, lifting up the booty to create a little more space using the grip on the knees or maybe behind the thighs as you find some circling through the torso. So the hips are nice and squared. We're grounding down to the sits bones if you're taking this option and finding that circling through the torso. Wherever you are, when it feels ready, reverse direction of those circles. Awesome work, and then just find some freestyle movement here if you'd like. And you can continue to work through cat cow, that spinal flexion. You could continue to work with the torso circles, or maybe you explore a little more. Maybe you kind of want to serpentine through the spine. Maybe you want to start to circle through the hips, maybe dropping them forward and back. If you are, again, protecting the knees and you're in that seated position, you can kind of get creative here. Maybe a little serpentine side to side. Continuing to circle through the ribs. You could bring the hands back for support. So just finding some movement through the upper body through the torso, through the shoulders. Work. And whichever position you're in, we're going to meet up in a seated position. So sitting on the ground, if that feels okay. You could also sit on a couch. You could sit on a chair. Whatever feels good for you there. And again, if you're sitting on the ground and it's a little hard for you to find that nice tall spine, sit on your blanket, sit on a block, get something to lift that booty up. We're gonna to continue to work with the heart openers, but bring in a little action with the shoulders. We've been really focusing on the spine. So let's just take it up a little bit. So grounding down to the sits bones. Release the arms down. Inhale, send the arms out to the side. Raise them up towards the sky, just as high as feels okay. 
On an exhale, bend the elbows, bringing them into goal posts. So working to bring the elbows parallel to the ground, level with the shoulders, and it's okay if they're not quite there. And then we've got a bend in the elbow, so trying to create that 90 degree angle. Close around is fine. Spreading out through the hands, sitting up nice and tall. Now we're gonna continue with that spinal flexion, the cat-cow, but bringing a little more opening in the shoulders. So inhaling to draw the chest forward as the elbows draw back. Pinch the shoulder blades together like you're trying to squeeze a pencil in between the shoulder blades. Maybe the gaze lifts if that feels okay in the neck. And then on the exhale, start to draw the elbows, forearms, and hands together, keeping that right angle or close there too. As you open up and separate through the shoulder blades, tuck in through the chin and round out through the spine. Awesome work. Inhaling to open through the arms. Chest comes forward, heart lifts, gaze lifts, shoulder blades pinch together, and exhale. Round it out. Arms come together. Elbows stay lifted. Beautiful work. Few more rounds here. These movements can be as big or as small as you'd like. Awesome work. Now we're gonna take this a little step further. We're gonna take it into eagle arms. And if this doesn't feel right for you, just come back to this movement, this opening through the front of the heart and then the opening through the back of the heart. But if you'd like to take it that step further, again, sit up nice and tall. You can do this sitting on the ground, sitting on a chair, sitting on, the, on a couch, anything where you can, you know, if you are sitting, plant the feet nice and solid so you have that foundation. If you're sitting on the ground, root down through the sits bones. Inhale to open up the arms to either side. Exhale, we're gonna start to bring the arms together. We're gonna bring the right elbow underneath the left, bend the elbow so the elbows are stacked, and then turn so that the backs of the palms, or sorry, backs of the hands, touch. Maybe you can get a double wrap to where the front of the hands can start to kind of play together. And if neither one of those works for you, release the hands and grab opposite shoulders. So, you know, one is not better than the other, just recognizing that we're all built differently. If you, um, you know, have tighter shoulders or have shoulder issues, if you've got a larger chest or a broader chest, you know, then this wrapping may not work for you. But whichever one you take, the elbows are stacked, or at least as close to stacked as feels right for you. We're lifting the elbows up and then drawing them forward so that we're once again opening up through those shoulder blades, creating more space, and we're letting the back of the heart shine out. If it would feel good here and you'd like to take it a little further, you could start to tuck the chin down towards the chest, opening a little more through the back of the neck. You could also start to round out through the upper back. We're not changing the position of the elbows. The elbows aren't dropping in towards the body. The elbows are continuing to draw away from the shoulders and up towards the sky, even if you choose to round out through the upper back. So again, you can be bowed forward. You can be raised up with the chin tucking. You could have the head raised. Palms could be touching, backs of the hands could be touching, or you could be grabbing opposite shoulders. If you're doing that, you can still take that rounding. Again, just don't let the elbows drop down. They continue to raise up, 
to really open up and create that space through the back side of the heart. And remembering that it is not just about the destination, it is the journey. Bringing our intention, our awareness to each movement to every moment of our practice. With that awareness, we are able to continue to check in with the body to make sure that we are doing what is best for it in that moment. For me, the most advanced yoga practice is not one where you're doing the, the crazy party poses. It's not where you can stand on your hands or you know, put your foot behind your head. Truly the most advanced yoga practice is one where you are tuned into your body and you give it exactly what it needs in that moment. Sometimes it'll be pushing your edge, maybe going a little bit deeper, a little bit further, a little, you know, kind of challenging yourself a bit. And sometimes it'll be backing off, bringing in that rest, listening to the body, taking a break, getting some water. That is truly the definition of an advanced yoga practice. Listening to the body and giving it what it needs in that moment, recognizing that it will change from moment to moment. And that should always be an intention in your yoga practice is to stay present, to listen to the body. Beautiful work. If you're bowed forward, nice and slow, start to raise back up. If the chin is tucked down, nice and slow, start to raise the head up. We're going to unravel, opening up through the arms. And for a nice counter stretch, release the hands back behind you. Maybe the hands just energetically draw together. Maybe they can interlace. Either way, we're opening up through the shoulders. So taking that counter stretch, pinching those shoulder blades together, lifting up through the heart, opening up through the front side of the heart. If the hands are interlaced, the hands are rooting down towards the ground, helping to so interlaced and reaching down, shoulder blades draw together, creating that opening in the front side of the heart. Awesome work. If it feels good in the neck, you could tilt the chin up, take the gaze up, but not throw the head back. We want to protect the, those neck bones, the delicate bones in the cervical spine. Awesome work. When you're ready, if the hands are interlaced, release the hands, bring the arms forward and just kind of shake them out. <laughs> Maybe you're rolling out through the wrists, maybe rolling out through the shoulders, whatever feels good here. We'll take our eagle arms on the other side and then we'll settle into a supported heart opener. So as you feel ready, again, from whatever seated position you'd like to take, you can see I switched to a hero's pose, so coming onto the knees. That was feeling better for me for my low back. You can, again, be seated on the ground. You could sit on a uh, couch. I don't know why I can't remember the word couch tonight. You can sit on a couch. You can sit on a chair. All of this is accessible for whatever feels right for you. So whatever way you're sitting, if you are sitting on a chair or a couch, plant the feet nice and firm. If you are sitting like me in a hero's pose, Tops of the feet are pressing into the mat. Hips are resting on the heels, but nice and steady. 
if you're sitting cross-legged or um, just sitting on the bum, and then you're finding a solid connection to the sits bones, lengthening up through the crown of the head. So we're sitting with intention, inhaling to open up the arms to either side. Exhale, we're bringing the arms together. This time the left elbow is coming underneath the right. And we're trying to stack the elbows or get them as close to stacked as possible. It's okay if they don't quite reach, especially if you have a broader or larger chest. Bending the elbows, you can bring the backs of the hands to touch. Maybe you wrap around to start to bring the fronts of the hands to touch. Or release the hands down and grab opposite elbows. Excuse me, opposite shoulders. Whatever position you're taking, the elbows as stacked as, as feels right for you, raising them up and drawing them away from the body so that we're getting this opening in the shoulder blades. There's a separation of the shoulder blades. Opening up through the back side of the heart. And again, you have all those other options to explore. You could stay here if it would feel good, tucking the chin down towards the chest, lengthening a little more through the back of the neck. You could also round out through the upper back, finding a little more opening in between the shoulder blades. Continue to connect to your breath. Breathing into that space you're creating in the back side of the heart. The opening in the shoulder blades. And then staying aware. We work both sides to bring balance, but we don't need to recreate the same exact shape or the same experience on both sides, especially if you've had injuries or if you know that you carry tension. You know, some of us carry a lot of tension in our upper back and our shoulders. So there could be some imbalances in there. Could just be the way we're built. There are a lot of different reasons why we find imbalances or asymmetries in the body. And we want to bring our awareness to those things so that we know what are the things that we can change that we can work on mindfully? And what are the things that we need to accept about our bodies to learn to work with them instead of against them? Awesome work. Continuing to connect to the breath. Again, checking in with the elbows. We're not letting them drop in towards the body, but they continue to lengthen away and upwards, even if we're rounding out. But it could just be subtle. It doesn't have to be any large movement. It doesn't have to be a large, deep stretch. And don't even feel like you have to come to 100% of your flexibility. Because in Restore, we do hold the poses longer. There is going to be a natural settling and natural opening. So you can ease your way into the full, you know, whatever your body's full expression of the pose is today. And recognizing that that will change every day, every moment that you step on your mat. And your body will be different, maybe in subtle ways, maybe in drastic ways. That's why we want to continue to check in and to bring that intention into our practice. Awesome work. As you feel ready, nice and slow, if you're bowed forward, start to raise up. If the chin was tucked, start to bring the head back up to neutral. Unwinding through the arms, nice and slow. Reaching them out towards the side and then releasing them back behind you for another counter stretch. If you are on a chair, you could maybe grab the back of the chair or the seat. Hands could interlace. They could just energetically draw together. Or if they are interlacing, go with the opposite direction. So whatever your hands naturally interlace, 
do it the unnatural way. Actually, that's the unnatural way. Just so that we're switching it up a little bit. Rolling the shoulders back and down. The shoulder blades pinch together. Root the hands down towards the ground. You don't, the elbows can have a bend in them. You don't have to straighten them all the way, but you can. And then we're opening up through the heart, through the chest. Gaze could lift. Beautiful work. Nice counter stretch. And finding that opening in the heart. As you feel ready, if the hands were interlaced, release, bringing the arms back forward and shake them out. I don't know if that looks as silly to me as, I can, as it does to you, but that just makes me giggle. <laughs> All right, shake it out, roll it out. Nice work. Now I'm going to get us into a supported heart opener. And I'll invite you to stay in this position through the duration of our practice. You can take this into your Shavasana, but know that when the time comes, I'll also give you the option to get into uh, a more traditional Shavasana or different pose that you'd like to take. So for our supported heart opener, we're going to come back to a reclined position like we started in. But this time, instead of the support underneath the knees, which you can bring that in again, but we're gonna bring support to the length of the spine. So if you have a bolster, this is gonna be perfect for that. If you don't, you can grab again a couch cushion. I'm gonna use this thicker, well, probably the combination of the two blankets, but I've got this thicker blanket and I'm gonna roll up. And since it's not quite the full length of my torso, I'm gonna bring in a block for the head. You could also roll up, a, if you have a second yoga mat, you could roll that up. Anything that's gonna be about the length of the spine to just bring in some support. The idea here is to get a lift in the back of the heart so that the tops of the shoulders can drop back and down further than they could if we were just lying flat on the back. So you can play with you know, how close or far away your cushion is to the low back. The closer it is, the more arch you're going to be creating and the more intense it's going to be on the low back. So you could scooch the booty forward so that you have less intensity there or scooch the booty right up if you want a little more intensity. And then as we lie back, you can see I've got that lift in the heart. I've got support for the head. Oh, I actually did need the block. And so we've got the shoulders rolling back and down, fully opening up through the heart. Hands can rest alongside the body. They can open up into a T or into goal posts. They could also rest on the belly. Legs can be doing whatever you'd like. They could stay, they could extend out for kind of a supported fish pose. A little more gentle option on the knees is, or on the back is planting the feet and bending the knees. You can even take this into a hip opener by bringing the bottoms of the feet together and letting the knees drop open, coming into a reclined cobbler's pose. So we've got that lift of the heart, lifting the back of the heart to open up through the front side. As we open up our hearts, ask yourself, what do I need the most right now? What is the one thing that I would really like help, guidance, or clarity on? These 
questions can help you to set more mindful intentions. As I said at the beginning of class, intentions can be set every morning, every yoga practice, every new cycle of the moon, every changing of the season. We have so many opportunities to bring intentionality into our lives, to live our lives more on purpose. And part of being able to move forward is letting go of past regrets, forgiving yourself for all that you did and didn't do, clearing out those regrets and replacing them with hope for the future, replacing them with your intentions to help you create those daily habits that support sustainable change. that will help to support you to reach your achievements, your goals, your resolutions. Not only letting go of the past, but also being honest with yourself about what is holding you back. What fears do you have around these goals and resolutions? What regrets have you not released? What forgiveness have you not offered yourself or others? What roadblocks have you created for yourself? And how can you use your intentions to help to clear those roadblocks? As I said, you are welcome to stay here for the duration of your practice. You're welcome to stay here through your Shavasana. As we prepare to wrap up our class, if there is a different position you'd like to get yourself into for your final relaxation or your final Shavasana, with intention, feel free to move into the position in that space. Feel free to take any final movements or stretches that will help you to round out your practice. As we Settle in or continue to relax into our final pose. The intention of our Shavasana is simple in theory, but one of the most challenging things for us as humans to apply to practice. And that is surrender. We move through our practice and our daily lives with intention, with our determination, with power, with force, with a sense, oftentimes false sense of control. And our Shavasana gives us an opportunity to practice surrendering to all that we have created through those intentions, through that hard work. And let that start to integrate into our bodies, into our minds, into our lives, so that we can feel the effects. We can let that magic take root and start to inform our daily decisions, our daily lives. And given this opportunity to practice surrender in our yoga practice, 
allows us that chance to then take that off our mat. So those times in life where we are asked to surrender, to let go, to let it be, and to just see how things work out. So in these last final moments of our practice, allow yourself to surrender. Releasing the body, releasing the breath, releasing the mind. With the only intention at this time to just be with yourself and to let yourself just be. you do have more time to dedicate to your Shavasana, please do give yourself the gift of, of as much time as you can carve out for this final moment, this opportunity to surrender, this opportunity to be. Before we end, I'd like to leave you with one last simple quote from Jennifer Williamson. Intention is more than wishful thinking. It is willful direction. When you feel ready, gently start to bring some movement back into your body. Taking your time, especially if you stayed in that supported heart opener, to move slowly, gently rolling onto one side of the body. And wherever you find yourself now, just pause for a moment and give yourself some gratitude. Thank yourself for carving out this time, for stepping on your mat, for allowing yourself to be open and vulnerable and to explore your own internal workings, to discover your who, why, how, through your intentions so that you can live a more present, mindful and fulfilling life. If you're not already there, gently press your way up to a comfortable seat. I'll invite you to bring the hands to heart center or take any other meaningful gesture with the hands. 
thank you so much for allowing me into your homes to share this gift and magic of yoga. I hope that you enjoyed the practice and that you have a fantastic rest of your day, night, whatever time that happens to be for you. Thank you so much. I see you, I honor you, and I bow to you. Namaste. And thank you so much for all of you who joined me live. I hope